picking over this saw, and this is the one that had the, the rod bearing fail. And this one's living the real life of a logger, so we're starting to get some feedback on what fails and what doesn't. These handles don't last more than a week, so highly recommend getting rid of these handles. I think we've said this before, they're just too soft. Had one of these fail, that's first. And that's one of the anti-vibe mounts. I just put another one on. Of course, I built up that bottom end. It's going to get the same bits and pieces. The research is not just about putting this all together and seeing if it runs. It's how long does it run. But I'm going to put a lot of stuff back because I want to see how the different pieces respond to being serviced. And service means having to tear a saw down once in a while and putting it back together. And we're going to start running a little video series about what has failed and what in fact has stayed around and worked okay. Now I can tell you he's coming in with my hot saw and the clutch failed and I knew that was going to fail. I think I had done a video before about how out around these things are. The ones that are really bad they'll fail pretty quickly. Um, a shimmed chain adjuster. It's rough but functional, so I'm putting it back in. I would still replace that with, with OEM. This top end survived a whacking. I think it's going to be fine. That seal is, is, I'm leaving just as it is. I just poked the crank right through it and it, it rolled out a little bit but went right back in when I started turning the crank. So I'm going to leave that seal. If the saw really counted, if it had to go for a long time and it wasn't part of my so-called research program, I would replace that seal with OEM. I really would. I think that's a weak point. Although this one has not failed and I haven't had any fail to this point in time, my instinct says that's one that has to go. And last but not least, the decomp. I'm putting a Husqvarna one on this one. I think those are prone to fail. But other than that, let's look at the good stuff. That cross cylinder has got some time on it and it took a whacking and it looks fine. The cases, the cases are good. Things like the chain brake lever, that's fine. Um, this clutch has survived. The chain brake internals have survived. The handle has survived. The carb, the ignition. So there's a lot of parts that um, in this mix are proving to, to be worthwhile. And this goes back to my original premise, is with these kits and subbing in some OEM parts or OEM quality parts, you can have a very, very serviceable saw. So I'm going to finish putting this together. We'll get it fired up. It's going to go back into service, and I'll continue to document what parts, if any, continue to fail. And I think basically the, the clutch, the actual handle, you know, those handles are, are junk. Um possibly the chain brake and possibly that 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 seal when things get hot those are the four areas that I had kind of focused on in the beginning and I still believe that's where you have to focus on now putting a better top end on I think the 54 millimeter uh, farmer techs are okay we're gonna test the new ones because they are different and that I guess that's the other point is um, some of this stuff is a moving target so far that crank I think went backwards because I've got one of these for a couple of years and of course this is just one crank out of a whole whole bunch but I was nervous about them these are the ones that had those uh, had too much metal in here they had to grind them back they just didn't have the same kind of a quality feel this one here in this saw is a new one and it too has a little more slop in the in the uh, the rod bearing than I would like but it's not outside the realm of of what I've seen so I'm not really worried about it and we're gonna find out I've got some of these saws that got a lot of hours same condition they were fine this is the ongoing series as I said I keep you all updated and I've got a bunch of these out now this is getting to be statistically predictable handles bent clutches fail um, things like that that's this is not the first but I'm the first one I'm putting on the film this is the first one of these to fail but I think what happened in this is because when that handle got bent, it got yanked hard. And I think it got just torn right out because of that event. 
Now this is a person who runs their saws hard. Day in, day out, a one-man operation, lives and dies by his saws. And to this point in time, we've had two failures. So this would not have passed the test for him. Fortunately, he's got a couple of 390s. He also has my junk pile 390. And of course, it's running just fine. And before you call that a slam, I'm going to make a friendly bet by two or three iterations on this saw, you're going to have one that just lasts a bunch of years too. The concept is based on real experience, not just hyperbole online. By tactically changing some parts in these, these kit saws, you can get a really good saw that approaches pro level. And I'm going to prove it. And I think we're there. I'm just showing you this stuff. Don't take this as a knock. Just take this as part of the research. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll do updates from time to time. But, you know, we focus on the failures. And everyone wants to say, ah, it's no good. Oh, another thing to point out is that the bearings did not fail. The case and the bearings did not fail. It was the rod bearing. It was the crank. When you put the oil pump on, don't forget that little rubber seal right there and that's kind of ugly but that's new it'll be okay and you have to make sure that tab goes into the recess on the on the case and to those who wonder which way that rubber piece goes on the end of the pump that section there goes right there Let's see if I can do this one-handed see how that sets right down in there do not forget that. Do not forget that one or that piece up there because it will not work. Just to get a look in there and how things are situated. I'm going to pop this spring at that band right there. You notice how that linkage goes through? Got to pop that circlip. And there's another one right down in there. So these are pretty tricky to put on. You know, um, I've got a tool that I've used to make it a little bit easier for me, but I just wanted you to get a look at it so you need a reference. That's what it looks like. Well, they're stacking up again. Jobs. Um, I wanted to do my old man saw, but a couple of the Hudsels came back and need to be sort of nudged along so they can go back to work. Um, one of them had a rod bearing go. I think I showed a picture of that. Really not sure why it, it died, but it did. This is my Farmer Jones. And it came back with a, a clutch spring busted, which is not the first time, by the way. And stud pulled out. I'm going to blame that on me not the saw because when I first put this saw together I had uh, put the short end into the case and promptly pulled it right out of the case so when it went out to the field it only had half the threads one of the things I've been trying to get a handle on is talking about the serviceability of these saws how they deal with being field repaired going back to work um, do the parts hold up from that kind of, because that's abuse all by itself, you know? Doing that case build and wrapping the saw uh, that had the blown rod bearing around that new set of cases, basically that means I had to pull the cylinder off, the handle, the handle, the muffler, and all those things. And while that may not sound like that's, you know, stress, it is. Because you take screws and um, you put them into the plastic, you pull them back out, so now those threads are ever so slightly larger. And on the good OEM stuff, you know, you can pull a saw apart, put it back together a couple times before things like the threads fail. I've already replaced the guts of the bar uh, adjustment. That's OEM shimmed this is an hl supply highway handle that survived uh, husqvarna d 
decomp has survived. And believe it or not, that top end has survived. That thing's still got great compression. And this, this saw really, really runs. It's a run. This is the one that has finger ports put into that cylinder by hand. What I'm going to do is pull that top end at some point and take one of the new top ends, deck it, put a finger port in, and put that on this saw. And that'll be a, yet again experimenting on the serviceability of the rest of the stuff, you know, and, uh, and, and starting to get some statistical data on that build. I'm really pleased with the top end because you always w worry about things like the ring snagging or if you get too much distance on the top of the transfers, you know, that might cause a ring to pop in there. And so far, nothing has gone wrong with the saw other than these things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to helicoil this on the saw, knowing full well that chips might go places. I don't want them to go. I'll try to minimize that. And I'm just going to replace this clutch for now with another Hudzel. But I have an HL Supply Highway clutch coming in for this one. And I think I'm going to take this saw and put it back into service for me this fall because I really enjoy running it. You know what I'm saying? Selfishly. <laughs> Uh, I want my saw back because that's one of my favorite saws to run. That one and the big bore. The big bore I retired. I think I did a video ceremony of that process last year. So it was kind of like my backup. But this here with the lighter weight bar and the way the power band is and the RPMs it has, um, even though I'm an old man, I really enjoy it. I can run it for an hour or two before joints say no. And then I have to go back to my 562s. But that hour and a half, you can get a lot of work done with a saw like this. So, before you're saying I'm getting down on these saws, I'm really not. But you see, the goal of this exercise is going to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Um, we kind of went through the hobbyist, farmer, let's make one run, cut a bunch of trees. And any one of those builds probably would have lasted as long as the typical firewood type or farmer type wants to run one. But I want to see if I can develop these... Farmer Tech 660s into something that a guy can actually take out in the woods and earn a living with. And yeah, we learned a lot on that first couple of years. But I want to see if we can develop this to the next level and with the help of some friends who actually make a living with a saw, put these things through, um, for lack of a better word, put them through the ringer. Find out what they actually can handle, what they can't. I'm kind of curious to see if this one's better. That one's going to give me garbage. I know. You know something? That looks, believe it or not, that looks way better than the one that came out of there. So is it possible that uh, we're getting an increase in, in quality there too? I've seen increases in quality in other places from, from this, this company. Now I have gotten these um, eBay and you can get the coils for a longer distance. You know, so that's what I did. I went and got some long coils along with one of these kits and they're really not that expensive and the hard part's going to be I think getting the stuff out of here without putting a whole bunch of chips and bar oil deal and I guess the right way to do it is to take that out and flush it you know get some gas in there and just flush it out and then actually put a block on the inside so I think that's what I'm going to do I think I'm going to dump out the oil not the end of the world if you strip one of those out and I think the other thing I need to stress is I don't consider that a weakness I don't think I've seen that as being a, a systemic weakness on these saws it was a weakness a mental weakness on my part when I first 
had put this saw together and I'd put that one in the wrong way. You know, that's me, not the saw. So I don't want I don't want this to turn into a well geez stuff isn't that good kind of a thread. It's not that at all. But this is the kind of thing a person may have to do. You know? Of course the worst thing that'll happen is I'll have to put another oil pump in. And that certainly isn't the end of the world either. I started messing with these things back in late 2014, uh, 2015. And there were a few guys who were kind of ahead of the curve already and had, had put them together. And they had run into, you know, premature blow-ups. And one of the first things that folks were doing on these was, was uh, doing the big bores, you know. So that was kind of a popular build time is putting the puzzle 56 millimeter top end and the problem was uh, they would put the top ends right on bolt on without really thinking about clearance because of course you would figure that the, the product development side of, of a company building that kind of a performance product would have done it well of course they hadn't and you can't <laughs> You can't just slap the top end on because there were some interference issues and there were some issues with free port and stuff like that. And one of the things you had to do was either be really careful in how you put that base gasket in. And that was one of the reasons why I always take the piston to, to bottom dead center. Sometimes you had to uh, take a little bit of material off the piston skirts. trying to take as much of the chip out with the drill as I can. Okay, I believe I got all the way in. In a normal situation, I would clear those chips before I put the tap in there. But if I do that, I want to clear them from the other side. So we're just going to gamble and go right for it. I've had this for decades. Decades and decades. This particular tool probably has its roots in the 40s. Just gonna make one pass, just to go straight in on that steel. Straight back out. And basically, you have to have enough thread to take that whole thing. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to blow it at this side, and I'm not going to clean off those chips yet. I know you, instinct is clean it off, clean it off. You don't want to do that because it'll just blow them into the hole. What I need to do now is pull the rag out, first clean off your tooling. So I need to pull the rag out of there. And your first clue is going to be on the rag itself. There isn't a lot of chip in there. So I think, I think this is going to work out to our favor. See them in there? So what i got to do is get them out of there.
What I'm going to do now is, is take what's left and blow it out the other side. Well, maybe a little bit here and there, but not enough to matter. So, I mean, if a person wants to get crazy, start flushing it out, but I think for what I'm trying to do, that's fine. Now we got the majority of that stuff out of there. Now you can go ahead and clean off this side. So the next part of the puzzle is getting the helicoil in there itself. And this is a tool which adjusts. You, you can move that collar back and you're going to have to because you've got to be able to reach the bottom of the coil. So once you get there, then just you wind that right in. And that should be a fairly stable thread. You do a helicoil, you also have to go in far enough. You know, you got to go in far enough to where one of those coils is not hanging out there on you. Thread that right in there. I had the two nuts already on it, right? With a heel coil, it should be pretty strong. And there is a stud. They got pulled out of the case, and now it's repaired. Now you can blow off all the junk on the outside and clean that saw up. So I promised a sort of a summary, as I'm putting tools away. And I guess the summary is this. I just had a lot of fun with these things. Really just that simple. And I've learned a lot. So for not a lot of money, you know, I've got these test beds, test things like muffler mods and no base gasket builds and just a whole variety of stuff that I've done on these things and to see whether or not you can make them run good. The 660s seem to be most developed, so probably the best ones to get into. So we talk about the bad stuff, that's what people focus on. Let's talk about the good stuff. Number one, still running. And I said this way, way back early on, that starting with a 660 and integrating some of the higher quality parts, you can come up with a very, very serviceable saw for not a lot of money. I would say budget $400. And I said that back in 2015 and I have not changed. Uh, my suggestion is to start with, with one of these 660s and immediately buy a highway handle for it because they're cheap and they're good. And change the clutch drum out. That one there is not bad. I'm going to try the highway clutch and clutch drum, give it a try, but expect to change something in the clutch, whether you just buy a complete clutch assembly, which is a little higher quality, the highway is possibly that. I don't have one in yet to check it, but I have had to change springs and clutches on a couple of these. I have not had the cases fail. I have not had any of the bearings, main bearings fail, just that rod bearing. Nothing with the pistons, wrist pin, none of that stuff has failed. But it's a very serviceable saw. It'll cut a lot of wood. And what I want to prove by the end of this year is that I can make one of these last uh, in a logging environment. That's the goal of this next set of changes. You know, there it is, ready for work. That's a great saw right there, by the way. I really enjoy that saw. This is the O36, 
And I haven't had anything fail on this saw. Nothing has failed. When I first had got it, the oil pump was not serviceable, so I had to get a different oil pump. The linkage is kind of goofy. Basically, um, it's pretty easy to start, but to get it off of high idle takes a little bit of playing around with this lever right here. I've articulated that. But other than that, there's nothing wrong with it. It's no powerhouse, but it runs well. Um, very serviceable saw, and if you can get around the controls issue, um, I, I think these are a great deal. They 038. This one here, again, I've had nothing fail, and it came with a broken chain brake spring that was broken on it, and I replaced that up front. Other than that, pretty much as it came out of the box, I had to come up with a different way of mounting that. I didn't like what came out of the, of the box, and I have that in one of my videos. It starts, it runs okay. It's a little down on power, and I, I think it's a little bit down on compression. I think it has a large squish. But other than that, a lot of the parts on this are actually better quality, like the side covers are better quality than what's on the 660. I mean, these are some nice looking stuff. The 038 here, I think this is going to be my favorite. Even though I've had a lot of time with the 660s and had a lot of fun with those, I don't know what it is about them. Is it their uh, klutzy looking oil pump and the big gears and Rube Goldberg looking stuff there? I don't know. But I enjoy this saw more than the other two. Even though I don't have as much time on it yet. But I plan to put on a different cylinder and I plan to you know, do a muffler mod and stuff like that and see if I can't get this saw to run the way a 70cc saw should run and uh, but it started right up and it ran well uh, I really can't complain in the sense that nothing has failed and or nothing has not worked it's just not quite as snappy as I would like it to be that's about it um, but it's a little bit lighter and, and I think it's got potential so what this is is Farmer Jones after spending some time with a with a logger and I just want to see if it runs I had to change his clutch because the clutch came apart and I had to heel coil the, the bar stud because that got tore out